months. Three months ago, we promised that we would come to Mudara and we would do our Saba Saba with a difference. Saba Saba is so critical that uh, you may recall uh, the, the young tax then in the 80s and 90s, men and women led by uh, men, again, uh, leaders like the late Ken Matiba, Ken Matiba, Charles Rubia, uh, Martin Shikuku, um, and even these, these days we have people like Governor Orengo, Governor Siaya, men who put their lives on the line so that this country, and of course our brother Raila Odinga was part of that, uh, that group, so that um, we would have um, a proper constitutional order in our country, that we would have a country that is both democratic and a respecter of basic human rights. Indeed, this was a struggle through Saba Saba that enabled us eventually to craft Constitution 2010, which was launched by the late President Mwai Kibaki. And since that time, this country has been on paper democracy. We ask ourselves on this Saba Saba day, is it still a democracy? Now, a latter day um, men and women, by this time young, the Gen Cs, have taken this a step further. As we commemorate Saba Saba, which is itself not even a national holiday. And as far as I'm concerned, if one was to ask me, this Saba Saba should become a national public holiday. Um, because it is so significant. This is, as I said earlier, um, the struggle uh, that brought Constitution 2010. But this struggle now has been heightened by the Gen C revolution. The Gen Cs are uh, are both on the streets because in Sabasaba and Kamukunji, those men and women were on, a lot of them were men by the way, <laughs> uh, we don't mean the demean our ladies, but it comes to a time when uh, that time a lot of men came out. But this time it's a lot of young women who are online, online and on the streets. We said during the funeral service of uh, the first one to fall, um, young man Rex Masai fell at 29 and we have realized between years a lot of them are young people uh, between the ages of 18 and 23 or thereabouts and so they have carried the struggle of Saba Saba and today as they gather in the streets of Nairobi or wherever they are we want them to know that Azimio Laomoja, one Kenya leadership, stands with them, as indeed we stand with all Kenyans. But we must also ask some basic questions. We had uh, uh, demonstrations last year where we lost about 75 Kenyans. And the demonstrations were on the cost of living, the high cost of living. And my brother Eugene will bear me witness. When we met as National Dialogue Committee, we had itemized item number one for discussion, the high cost of living. That was very important to us as a Zmeo. But Kenya Kwanza said, said, no, 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 no. It is our business as government. You will not discuss. And eventually he said, fine. Then we went on to the other issues the culmination of which was the draft bills that are now lying in the National Assembly. We think that uh, um, the low-lying fruit out of those discussions is the IBC uh, Amendment Bill 2024, which William Ruto has promised to sign into law. We say that this should be done expeditiously on this Abbasaba day, so that we can have the process get underway of coming up as soon as possible with a new IEBC. Because the country right now is at a crossroads. This is not uh, a thing that we think should be delayed for even one extra day. 
allow us also to uh, really commend our leaders in the Senate, the whole Senate. I saw for the first time Azumio and Kenya Kwanza talking the same language at the floor of the Senate when they refused to go on recess because the country was burning. What happened on the other side? <laughs> the National Assembly. I think it was the tunnel that helped them get away from young Kenyans, running away from their own youth. The and the ambulance. Some of them, I'm told the speaker, escaped in an ambulance. <laughs> and some of them tried to access vigilante house and the police for once told them, no, 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 the GNC is on you. And you may have seen them escape by helicopter atop the KICC. What a shame. Running away from your own people. But the Senate has stood firm and asked for, for once for accountability in support of the agenda by Gen C. So we, Mishmoa Senator Ambua, who is the Deputy Minority Leader in the Senate, for as a meal, we thank you and your team. And even those others like Boni Alwale, and even I saw Cheruyot, apologize. <laughs> it is apology time to this country. So this Abbasaba day is very significant in this country. Very, very significant. Um, of course, uh, when it happened in the 80s and 90s, it gave way to the um, doing away with article, amending the constitution, the famous section 2A, to allow for multi-party democracy, which is what we are today. This time, the GNC has got William Ruto to do away with Finance Act 20, 20, Finance Act 2024, and then also Finance Act 2023, which is still operational. Some of us hold the view that, um, for example, the housing tax is a slash fund. We have said it that we have said that before. The corruption continues unabated. A lot of money is get collected and uh, no, account, no accountability with regard to how they use their money. The problem some have said in this country is not revenue collection, but the consumption levels, the opulence, <laughs> uh, the greed that has been demonstrated by leaders. The inexplainable nepotism in this country, additional to corruption, nepotism, tribalism. But the GNCs, congratulations, they have come up now with a country that we can say is getting detribalized. Because if you want to annoy the GNCs, you, you, you talk to them about your, your tribe. <laughs> so this is a big achievement. And, and the days of transparency are ahead of us. But before that happens, um, there's a lot of work to do. And we have come to Meru to tell our brothers and sisters that the struggle continues, a luta continua. Um, even before we go to church and uh, meet the people in Lari and, and also in Makutano later today. My colleagues can uh, can add something. We, we had wanted a, a, a written text, but I think we've given a summary of what we wanted to do. We say justice, we were saying justice for Rex, Masai, but not just for Rex because he was the first one to fall this year. The 75 of them who fell last year and whose families are still distraught with grief, justice for them as well. We say the people men and women um, who have responsibility over these deaths still and we know them we have called for their res resignation and the responsibility begins from the very top we are not talking about 75 now 41 you're looking at a total of excess of 100 Kenyans who fell to the police bullets So this Abbasaba day, we remember them. We say their lives, they did not fall in vain. 
their lives will be, ah, how do we put it? They say they will try to compensate pay, but the agencies are so amazing. Within uh, two days, they are able to raise over 28 million shillings. They don't want. And they have called everybody on notice. <laughs> Can you imagine William Ruto say there will be no church arambes, no arambes by people close to him? And yet you used to say that at some stage they should give billions to churches. <laughs> everybody, including the church, has been called by agencies to be accountable. That's why you say this country will never be the same again. So justice for over 100 Kenyans will fail between last year and this year. And many others who got maimed, still some recovering in hospitals, and yet others lost property. Kwa hivyo mambo hayo ni magumu na tunasema tunazidi kusema pole sana kwa wote ambao wamepoteza watu yao jamii zao na tusimama pamoja sisi kama wanaazimio pamoja nao Eugene Ah uh, thank you very much excellency and uh, let me start by also joining uh, my brother Peter Munya and the leadership of uh, Meru and this region and uh, thanking them for welcoming us here. We were here earlier and uh, you welcomed us back. Wanasema hadi ni deni na tukawapa kulipa deni tulikuwa tumesema tutarudi. But we have come back on a very special day in the history of our country, Saba Saba Day. This is the day that Kenyans came out and died to bring an end to a dictatorship. And it's as a result of those who came out and died. They went to Kamkunji, they took on a dictator. That section 2A was removed and a new constitution was birthed in our country. Today, we say to those who lost their lives last year, during the Mandamano, 75 of them, 41 Gen Zs who lost their lives and they're all very young from Rex, who was 29, that we buried in Machakos the other day, to Kennedy Onyango, who was only 12 years, and who took almost eight bullets. And this system keeps changing the story. But Kenyans saw a little boy of 12 years whose body was riddled with bullets and who died at the hands of our police. We are here to commemorate these deaths, but also to salute the freedom fighters. These young Gen Z's, 41 of them, are heroes just like the freedom fighters of our first liberation who got the colonial government out of place. Freedom fighters of the second liberation who went on Sabasaba Day and got the Nyayo system out and who said Moi must go, and Moi went. Today we hear these young heroes saying Ruto must go, and Ruto will go. We have no doubt about that. It's a matter of time. We know he's trying to panel beat his government, mm. to put some very cosmetic changes, to form task forces. We must thank the Law Society of Kenya for rejecting, to be lured, into a system of cleansing an already failed regime. 